Anyone else? So we have two questions. Okay. My um, first question is, um, does it make sense to have, for example, two Facebook accounts? Like we heard yesterday, I think Linda said this, like one for work and one for friends and socializing. And the second um, question is rather controversial. Isn't it a little bit superficial to judge people by their profiles? I mean, I, I think it's so sad that we're kind of talking here about selling ourselves online. I want to go to a job interview and I want to be judged by what I am and not by what people see about me on yeah. the internet. Okay, no problem. Uh, sorry, just run your first question by me and then I'll definitely come on to the second one. So you're, sorry, remind me of the first question. Two profiles, yeah, okay. There's a number of ways of dealing with things. If we just take Facebook as an example, um, because Facebook has now changed its levels of privacy. So you can ha accept people as friends, but keep them as an acquaintance. So when you're updating your status, you can update to friends except acquaintances. So it might be that you want to keep the acquaintances as just that professional level, rather than having two profiles. The other way of doing it, because outside of university I do wedding photography and I have my own business, and I have a page for that business, which sits as a sub-page within my Rebecca Douglas Facebook page, so people can then like that page. So you might choose to set up your profile um, as a job centre or as a European Studies graduate, um, whatever sort of title you'd like to give that page, and then feature information there that relates to your job search. Um, on your second point, I completely agree with this, but what you can't get away from um, is that yes, um, and I can only reflect on sort of the UK labour market, so we have the Equality Act that uh, protects people um, for a number of protected characteristics, be that ethnicity, gender, age, uh, disability, um, and so what should be focused on is the person's skill set that they're bringing to the table and the ability to do their job, um, and it should be regardless of, you know, basically the space in which that person occupies the world. The reality of it is, people do search, people do look. Um, I personally didn't, but even when I was working recruitment in 2009, um, I say, oh, we need a receptionist, where it needs to be quite a pretty female for our reception. I was, I was like, sorry? <laughs> I'll send the candidates that can do the job. So I, I can't neglect the fact that this goes on. So really, it's to highlight for you the fact that ideally, and in an ideal world, people would just focus on the skills, but the reality of it is, Recruiters have Google at their fingertips. We're an internet um, you know, society now. People will look for that kind of knowledge and information online. So it's down to you about how much information you have on your profile, whether you have pictures that are public and so on, um, and how you sort of police that personally. Was that a fair feedback? Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I have a question, like uh, in the beginning of the presentation, you said about the strengthen, strengthenings and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, should we say about, yeah, about the strength, yes, we, we have to let the employer know about it, but about the weaknesses, should we be honest with them, or we try not to talk about that, or, or we just like not to say about that at all? I think online, or with a CV, um, or online or CV, it's over to you about what information you put out there. On an application form, if you're asked to articulate your weaknesses, you have to do that because it's a box that needs completing. Um, whereas you have control, and if you think about um, your CV or any online social media presence, it's kind of like the shop window to who you are, but then the interview or that personal contact is then getting to know the shopkeeper, if you like, behind that front window. Um, and how many times do you have to make a first impression? One, yeah. So just think about the, the information that's out there and it needs to be that positive representation of yourself but not one that is overly ambitious in terms of stating the skills and attributes that you have um, and then setting yourself up for a fall perhaps in the interview if you've articulated things um, and gone a little bit too over the top of things. So does that help at all? Am I sitting on the fence too much with that? <laughs> Motivation letter, should we write about weaknesses in, into that also? I think that's quite a dangerous tact to do. Um, I think it should probably come out at, we uh, at weaknesses, sorry, at interview, 
but it's a process that's worth going through before you start applying for jobs to know what your strengths are, but then where your weaknesses are, because it's something that you could be looking at developing even as you're going through a job search process. So if your job search weakness is, I've had no interview experience, then you get one interview, you've had that experience then. So then that perhaps that weakness of knowing what to expect in an interview, what it might feel like for you, uh, then becomes less, a less significant weakness because you've had an interview and so on. So I think, know about going into the interview, but I probably personally wouldn't look at highlighting weaknesses unless I was probed on them. Maybe we'll take this as last the last question, question and then we'll open the panel okay. for the other way. Uh, can you tell us about uh, dress code for interviews? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's very important and uh, probably have some advice uh, with colors, how to play, because they also play a very big important role. Yeah, okay. Um, I think one thing that you could do is ask what to wear at interview. And often when I was working in recruitment, people would say, what should I wear? Um, I would always check with employers when I was taking in um, a recruitment brief. Um, about what the culture of the environment is like, you know, is it a suited and booted environment or is it smart casual, what does it look like? Now you might not have the opportunity to do that if you're a cold applicant to a company, but perhaps um, if it's a company that's near where you're, you're living, you could go and visit it informally without really disclosing who you are just to see um, sort of what the dress code might be. But again, it's down to that first impressions thing. So even if you wore a suit to interview and you know people just wear jeans and t-shirt in the office, it's that first impression. Um, and perhaps that's something that might make you stand out if everybody else turns up quite casually dressed to an interview. So um, I, I would personally dress on the very smart side for an interview and then adapt that to the working environment once I've secured the job. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time.